All praise due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his glorious book, Help one another to do what's right and good, and do not help one another towards sin and hostility. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our Master Prophet Muhammad is Valerie and Messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path to the day of judgment. When contemplating the rulings of the Sharia, we find that it, it came to achieve the public interests of communities and individuals, and to elevate the human self and raise it to a higher rank. Thus, everything that achieves the common welfare of people is in line with the Sharia, even if it is not stated exp explicitly in the Sharia's texts. Also, anything that contradicts this objective has no basis in the noble Sharia. The pure religion of Islam does not acknowledge individuality, selfishness, or negativity, and does not accept the preference of individual interest over the public one. Islam acknowledges only the public well-being, sincere bestowal, cooperation for a good cause, piety, and selflessness, so that the society can attain the desired progress and solidarity. In this way, one's work should be for the sake of the public interest of the whole society which in turn achieves the well-being of the individual and the group as a whole. This fosters among all citizens the sense of being united like one body, that when one of its limbs suffers, the whole body responds to it with wakefulness and favor. When reviewing the Book of Allah, one becomes fully certain that the general and universal purpose of the rulings of the Sharia is to achieve people's public welfare and to protect them against harm and evil. The glorious Quran asserts that preserving interests and achieving the public good was the approach of the messengers and prophets. The Almighty Allah sent prophets or messengers except only to bring happiness to their people without asking them for any reward or a worldly benefit. The Almighty Allah recounts what Prophet Noah, peace be upon him, said to his people. As he said, and my people, I do not ask you for money. My reward is with Allah. Also, Prophet Hud said, I ask no reward from you, my people. My reward comes only from him who created me. Why do you not use your reason? And Prophet, Prophet Ibrahim invoked his Lord with a prayer that shows his keenness on the benefit of his people, saying, Ibrahim said, My Lord, make this land secure and provide with fruits those of its people who believe in God and the last day. It is known that the meaning of the word this land here means its people. When a place is secure and its people have their provision and livelihood, they will worship Allah safely and peacefully with assured and calm hearts that seek to please Allah who said, it was he who brought you into being from the earth and made you inhabit it. So ask forgiveness from him and turn back to him. My Lord is near and ready to answer. The Islamic Sharia came to raise this human value and reformative principle and to establish the rules for maintaining the stability of the society and striving for its advancement and progress by giving preference to the interest of the group over that of the individual. The biographies of the companions are rich with examples that prove this fact. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri narrated, Once we were on a journey with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, when a rider came and began looking right and left, the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever has an extra amount should offer it to him who is without it, and whoever has surplus food should give it to him who has nothing. And the Prophet continues mentioning other properties until we thought that none of us had any right to surplus of his own property. Aisha is reported to have said, A poor woman came to me crying for her two daughters. I gave her three date fruits. She gave me a date to each one of them, and then she took up one date fruit and brought, it to that, and brought that to her mouth to eat. But her daughters asked her that also. She then divided between them the date fruit that she intended to eat. This kind treatment of her impressed me, and I mentioned that to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, who said, 
Verily, Allah has assured paradise for her because of this act of her. Or in a very narration, he said, He, the Almighty, has rescued her from hellfire. During a year of drought, workers for Uthman ibn Affan came from Syria, bringing him 1,000 camels laden with wheat or other food. The merchants came to Uthman and asked him, What do you want? They said, People are suffering great hardship, so sell the food you have received. Uthman said, How much in return will you give me? The merchants said, we offer you the double of what you have paid. Uthman said, I have been offered a better price. The merchants said, We offer you three times, then four, then five times. And Uthman refused as well. The merchants said, There are no merchants in Medina other than us. Who has given you a better offer? He replied, Allah the Most Exalted. He has given me a better offer, ten for every dirham. Can you offer me more? They said, No, by Allah. Uthman said, I call upon Allah to be witness that I am giving you this food as charity for the, pe for the poor people of Muslims. Also, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked the companions to buy the will of Ruma that was owned with a Jew who wanted to sell it for a high price, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to the companions, Who will buy the will of Ruma? and dip his bucket in it alongside with the buckets of the Muslims. Uthman then went to the Jew and negotiated with him. Yet the latter refused to sell the entire will, which is why he bought, it, bought half of it for 12,000 dirhams, and he made it under the free disposal of Muslims. The selling contract decrees that the will's ownership will be divided between Uthman and the Jew. So when it was the, the day of Uthman, Muslims used to take from the water what sufficed them for two days. When the Jew uh, saw that, he said, You have made the will of no avail for me, which is why Uthman bought the second half for 8,000 dirhams. Uthman's action comes in response to the Prophet's order that aims at realizing the interests of Muslims. During the era of Omar ibn al-Khattab, it happened that al-Masjid al-Haram was not spacious enough for, for worshippers, which is why he forced the owner of the houses in proximity of the masjid to sell them, and said to them, You are the ones who came and settled around the Kaaba, not vice versa. The same thing was also done by Uthman, may Allah be pleased with him, yet people objected to him, which is why he said to him, to them, what dared you stand against me is my forbearance. Otherwise, Omar himself did so, yet none dared to oppose him. Then he ordered that they should be imprisoned. This clearly indicates that it is lawful to dispossess one's individual ownership for the sake of the public interest like widening roads and graves and establishing mosques, fortresses, and public organizations such as hospitals, school, rehabilitation centers, etc. Because public interest is given precedence to the private one. In this connection, we affirm that the true understanding of Islam necessitates that a change for the common good should take into account people's reality in such a way that considers the arrangement of the society's urgent needs and necessities according to their top priority. That's to say, if the society is in a dire need for building hospitals to provide treatment for the poor and care about them, then this should be given priority to any other form of public interest. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the world. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon the sale of all prophets and messengers, his family and companions. Muslim brothers, Islam has seriously considered the arrangement of priorities to the extent that it instructs the public interest should be given precedence to the private one or the personal one, as far as preference among them is shown. That's because public interest benefit will cover the entire society, whereas that of the private interest does not exceed the individual to others. 
For example, if man who works for a particular institution spends his entire night offering prayers, then goes to work in the morning so tired that he was unable to fulfill the needs of his work and the interests of his institution, he is considered a person who does not honor the trust and unlawfully receives his salary. That's because he, by doing so, has given precedence to the recommended acts of worship over the obligatory ones, which is a misunderstanding of the objectives of the religion. Amazingly enough, when Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, was in his agony, he advised Omar, saying, Know that there are acts of worship dedicated for night, so that they would not be accepted in performed in the daytime that there are other acts that should be offered in the day thus will not be accepted if done in the night and that Allah will not accept the recommended acts of worship until the obligatory ones are done drawing on this understanding of the objectives of this purified religion and in terms of the importance of arranging priorities we emphasize that fulfilling people's needs should be given precedence to the repetition of pilgrimage and umrah because alleviating hardship from a poverty-stricken person, giving out charity to the poor and meeting his needs, paying the debt of a prisoner to set him free, are all collective duties. It is taken for granted that observance of a collective duty is given priority to all recommended acts of worship, including the repetition of pilgrimage and umrah. We are actually in a dire need for the proper understanding of our religion and for awareness of our reality in a way that makes us realize the dangers around us and that enables us to sincerely give precedence to the public interest over the personal one in fulfillment of the instructions of the prophet religion and in hopes for the realization of the progress and advancement for our country.